some prominent men had very strong opinions about women's right to vote. As did some prominent women. In England, voting rights were always historically linked to land ownership. If you owned property, you could vote. You could even have more than one vote if you owned enough. However, if you didn't own land, you couldn't vote. It was that simple. So in this scene here, while these brave women fight for the vote, look at the policemen. Policemen primarily lived in boarding houses and didn't own land. That's right, the policemen arresting her didn't have the vote either. Before the first Reform Act in 1832, roughly one man in ten had the right to vote. After 1867, the time of the Second Reform Act, this figure rose to 4 in 10, as the amount of property you needed to qualify was reduced. More men qualified, but most men were still disenfranchised, principally because only one man in any one household was allowed to vote, denying any resident sons and brothers. From 1918, all women over the age of 30 could vote, and all men over the age of 21. Then, finally, absolutely equal rights to vote were introduced with the Equal Franchise Act of 1928. We can see from this that the right to vote in England up until 1918 was always about class and never about sex. Only the 10 year period between 1918 and 1928 could legitimately be claimed to be discriminatory on the basis of sex. But the suffragette movement was active since 1906 in England, solely concerned with votes for women. Votes for women! Votes for women! Our daughters' daughters will adore us and they'll sing in grateful chorus. Well done! Men that were involved in the suffrage movement, and there were many more men campaigning than women, were in favour of votes for everyone, not just votes for men. If most men could not vote in 1906, why would women start a radical movement concerned only with a women's vote? Why is it that in my own school education, I was taught that only women were denied the vote prior to 1918? It was never mentioned in class, nor clarified in my textbooks, that men were also denied the vote. So, before 1918, in your mind, did you do you see it that men could vote and women couldn't? Yeah. But before 1918, mm. you had to own a certain amount of land in order to be able to vote. So there were many, many men that couldn't vote either. Mm. But would you say that you were less aware of the men not having the vote than women not having the vote before I was men? less aware. I mean, thinking about it, I guess I, I knew. But I was, yeah, it didn't really raise up into, into the issue which it, which it should have done. Um, yeah, because it was very much, it is a very much a class issue, and it always was very much a class issue, rather than a gender one. Considering that millions of men in the First World War had no right to vote, yet were conscripted and sent to fight and die in battle by the government, why were women not interested in those men's right to vote? Battlefields swept by machine gun fire, devastated by shelling. The sheer depth of selfishness inherent in women truly began to show itself in these times and equal rights with men. While men were slaughtered in the hundreds of thousands during the war, women chose to focus on women's rights. I don't think women were completely powerless before, 19, before 1918. Um, th that would be ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, one minute they were completely powerless, the next minute they were very powerful. Um, it doesn't work like that, of course they weren't. They were, they were just as powerful, it's just that it wasn't being recognised in the institutions of the day. It hasn't been a case of, you know, for how many thousands of years that we've been on the earth, in the last 70 years women have suddenly got power. <laughs> That's absurd. It's gone around in cycles, societies have evolved, women have had lots of power, then they've had few power, and then they've had more power, and then it's gone to low power, and then they've had... The same with men. It's, 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 not, it's, it's not starting from point zero, moving to point kind of 100 over here. In terms of women getting the vote in 1918, the difference before 1918 was that women couldn't vote. The difference after was that they could. Sorry. That's it. With the veil of history, feminism has told a lie that only women were denied the vote in these times. Feminists use this false injustice to legitimise themselves and gain support from the majority of us who don't know any better than the version of truth we were taught in our feminised schools. There's no higher source of moral authority nowadays than to have suffered discrimination. By painting themselves as victims throughout the ages, women now have tremendous political capital. They obviously put a great deal of effort into moving outside of the status of victims. But what they've got now is all the 
advantages and and protection that comes with the status of victims when they're not actually victims anymore. Um, and they would say themselves that they're not victims, and yet they claim all the powers of victims, so you can do no wrong. The problem is that they still think of any comment from a man or any, any attempt of a man to gain power as being at the expense of women. So men are kind of be, are being hobbled in trying to, to gain power for themselves because any man gaining power is gaining power at the expense of women <laughs> across the board. Whenever uh, men try to speak out or articles are written that in some way oppose the feminist agenda, women's groups, women's lobby groups, will stir up in their gullible female supporters hysteria and they will claim and they will um, argue that the um, attacks that are made on the feminist movement and on the female point of view create a climate of fear amongst the vulnerable females in the community and therefore they should not be articulated at all. So in other words, the very act of protesting against the feminist movement is deemed by them to be uh, creating a climate of fear. So men must not speak in case those women who happen to be vulnerable out there hear you. No man can help themselves because when a man does that, they're taking it away from women. For the last goodness knows how many years, time and time again, one would read in the newspapers that the laws were somehow biased against women. Can you believe it? Lawyers, A, B, C down to Z, would write about how women were unfairly treated with regard to the, the, the alimony, their alimony in divorce, what have you. Uh, Baroness Kennedy, Helena Kennedy, people like that. They would proudly proclaim who they were and what their, and what their objectives were. Two years ago, a barrister wrote in the Times an article which quite meekly pointed out that men were sometimes unfairly treated in the law. He didn't dare give his name. This was only two years ago. And so my point is that that's how much intimidation people feel about speaking out. So what women do is they can be oppressive, uh, and as we've seen with fathers' rights, um, they are being oppressive but they will never even think of themselves being oppressive. They won't even imagine that they're being oppressive because in their mind, in their world, they're victims and they're still victims. In the present day in the UK, men must work to age 65 to qualify for the full state pension. Women need only work to age 60. This has been the case since 1950 and will not be equalised at age 65 until the year 2020. So this is some 70 years worth of discrimination against men, seven times longer than the voting discrimination against women. This isn't discrimination against men that occurred nearly a hundred years ago. This is happening right now. And women live for longer than men. So while women retire at 60 and die at 81, giving them 21 years of life after work, men retire at 65 and die at 76, giving them only 11 years of retirement. So whilst men are forced to work themselves near to death, women enjoy a long retirement. And what's our main concern about this situation? To this day, American men must register for the draft to be eligible to vote. Men must be prepared to fight and to defend their democratic right to vote with their lives if required. However, women have no such obligation. How can all this be happening in a male-dominated society?